Hi and welcome. This tutorial is the 21st part of the C Sharp for Beginners course and focuses on exception handling in C Sharp. When I was creating this tutorial, it became apparent that a lot can be said about exceptions, so I've split this tutorial up into five parts. The first part of this tutorial will provide an overview of exception handling in C Sharp. The following parts will be practical in nature, where we'll dive deeper into C Sharp exception handling through the creation of a basic application. This application will function as a basic calculator. The second part will focus on the try-catch block structure used in C-sharp to catch and handle exceptions. In the third part, we'll build our own custom exception. In the fourth part, we'll build a logging class for the purpose of logging exception information to a text file. We'll then appropriately integrate the logging functionality into our application. And in the fifth and final part of this tutorial, We'll implement code to validate user input and allow the user to make several attempts at entering valid data before throwing an exception. Please like, subscribe, share, comment to support the channel. It will be greatly appreciated. So what is an exception? A C-sharp exception is a response to an exceptional circumstance that occurs while a program is running. The common language runtime provides an exception handling model that is based on the representation of exceptions as objects. The developer is able to anticipate certain exceptions that could occur during the running of the developer's software and write code to handle the exceptions through the use of try-catch blocks. Zero or more catch blocks are associated with a try block and a catch block can include a type filter that determines the type of exception being caught. Let's look at some of the standard types of exceptions that can be caught using a catch block within a try-catch block. Let's navigate to a Microsoft web page, I've included the URL below in the description, where we can view a table containing content regarding some of the standard exception types provided in the C-sharp language. So if we scroll down a bit, we can see this table containing the standard exception class name followed by a brief description. For example, argument exception occurs when a non-null argument that is passed to a method is invalid. Argument null exception occurs when an argument that is passed to a method is null. Divide by zero exception occurs when a denominator in an integer or decimal division operation is zero. Format exception occurs when a value is not in an appropriate format to be converted from a string by a conversion method such as pass. Overflow exception occurs when an arithmetic, casting or conversion operation results in an overflow. Drive not found exception occurs when a drive is unavailable or does not exist. And there are many more standard exceptions. Note, there may be times when there are no standard exception classes that suit your exception handling needs. When this is the case, the developer is able to create a custom exception class to suit the special requirement. A custom exception class can be created by inheriting from the C-sharp exception class. Note that all standard and custom exception classes inherit from the C-sharp inbuilt exception class. In this tutorial, we'll write code to handle both standard exceptions and custom exceptions through the creation of a code example. The developer should strive to be as specific as possible when catching exceptions. For example, all C-sharp exceptions inherit from the exception class, so you can catch all C-sharp exceptions by including the exception type as the type filter in a catch block. This, however, is discouraged because, for example, if a divide by zero exception occurs, it will be more appropriate to handle the exception in a completely different way as to how you would handle, for example, an argument null exception. The developer should always include the most derived exception as the catch type filter in a catch block that most specifically describes the nature of the exception. So for example, you could use the arithmetic exception class as an exception filter for a catch block, and this will catch both overflow exception types as well as divide by zero exception types. However, it is not ideal to catch these two types of exceptions in one catch block by using the arithmetic exception class as the catch filter. 
because the nature of these two exceptions are very different. These two exceptions should be handled within two different catch blocks. The reason both these exceptions can be caught using an arithmetic exception catch filter is because both the overflow exception class and the divide by zero exception class inherit from the arithmetic exception class. Each catch block can optionally be passed as an exception object which will be of the same type as the relevant exception class used as the catch filter. So this exception object stores information about the relevant exception. The information can be accessed through certain properties and methods. As discussed, the exception class is the base class from which these exceptions inherit. Let's navigate to another Microsoft web page to look at a table which contains content relating to property members of the exception class. Through these property members, the developer is able to access information about the relevant exception. For example, the message property provides a human-readable message that contains details about the cause of an exception. The stack trace property contains a stack trace that can be used to determine where an error occurred. The stack trace information includes the source file name and the program line number if debugging information is available. The inner exception property can be used to create and preserve a series of exceptions during exception handling. You can use it to create a new exception that contains previously caught exceptions. So let's briefly look at what happens in memory when an exception is thrown. So let's say that the main method calls method 1, which calls method 2, which calls method 3, which calls method 4. And you can see that as each method is called, the method is put onto the stack. Very basically, a stack is a predefined portion of memory set aside by the operating system for each thread of an application. Each method is represented on the stack in its own stack frame. So let's say method 4 throws an exception. The stack unwinds until one of the methods on the stack catches the exception. If a method catches the exception, code within the relevant catch block can handle the exception. Code within this catch block can throw another exception up the stack using the throw new exception code. It is recommended that the object thrown inherit from the exception class, or throw the caught exception by using the throw keyword on its own. Note that if the exception is not handled in code by one of the methods on the stack, the common language runtime will use a default exception handler to handle the exception. And lastly, a try catch block can also contain a finally block. If a finally block is present in a try catch block, code within the finally block will be executed both when code within the try catch block succeeds and therefore an exception is not thrown and also when code within a try block causes an exception to be thrown. So note the finally block is always run, which makes it an ideal place to include cleanup code, for example, code for closing files or code for closing database connections. Okay, that was a very basic overview of exception handling in C-sharp. Don't worry if you didn't fully understand all of that information. To help clarify exception handling in C-sharp, we'll look at a code example in the subsequent parts of this tutorial. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll dive deeper into exception handling and start to build a basic calculator application. Please like, subscribe, share and comment to support the channel, it will be greatly appreciated. And please ring the bell so that you can be notified of future content which will be coming soon. Thank you and take care.